An Apollo 13 astronaut helps take students to infinity. This will fill in with exhibits in every niche and, and corner. An Apollo 13 astronaut is behind the new mission to build an extraordinary scientific tourist attraction right next door. We'll tell you about infinity when we come back. You're watching Fox 8 News. In the future, when somebody stops at the Mississippi Welcome Center on I-10 looking for something to do in Mississippi, they might be told, well, you could check out that world-class science center next door. Mississippi, with a big lift from NASA, is building Infinity. Apollo 13 astronaut Fred Hayes and many others have devoted long hours to building the science center virtually on the state line with Louisiana. Uh, God might generate letters, phone calls. Fred Hayes so, you know, if I put is a man on a mission. Uh, An Infinity uh, board member, Hayes has devoted five years mostly to fundraising. Today, a dream unfolds before his eyes. The $42 million Infinity Science Center. My main uh, reason for being there was what it'll offer to uh, school children. Apollo 13 flight controllers, give me a go, no go for launch. Hayes is best known as one of the crew members on the ill-fated Apollo 13 mission. Bill Paxton played him, but he enjoyed a successful second career as an aerospace executive after he hung up his NASA uniform. And virtually, this will fill in with exhibits in every niche and, and corner. And he speaks passionately about science education and the world challenge facing America. We're lagging, obviously, uh, in studies that are done and in, in surveys uh, worldwide. The U.S. is falling behind in those disciplines. Uh, this is actually the main grand entry plaza. Uh, we'll yeah, you really get kind of a, the bigness of it here. Yes, absolutely. Hayes and Infinity's Education Development Director, John Wilson, fountain. give us a tour through 72,000 square feet. So, uh, those two pieces of pipe sticking up there, that's a big counter where you'll buy your ticket. However, at Infinity, we don't have a ticket. We, you get an explorer's notebook. Complete with 3D glasses and a mission you're assigned. And one of them is our wetlands are disappearing. Help us understand why. All of the six missions are designed around actual work done at the sprawling Stennis Space Center, from fixing the coast to exploring the ocean to working with a wind tunnel, designing buildings that will stand up to future hurricanes. The next stop is what we're calling the 3D Immersive Theater. Okay. This is actually a very large version of what a lot of people call a cave. That is Wilson a says it's real science based on the work of uh, real people. We went inside the gates of Stennis Space Center, talked to 3,000 scientists, engineers, and technicians, and we said, tell us the coolest stuff that you do. They promise lots of interactive bells and whistles. They use keyboards and mice, and they have to enter data in the computer. To trick the kids into learning. I'll, I'll call it, it's an orchestrated form of brainwashing. Our goal at the end of the day is to inspire the next generation to do the kinds of things that Fred did. To do the exploration, to be the engineers, lofty stuff like unlocking the secrets of the universe. But Hayes says also to help children find their own gifts. Some, some may not have a, the right kind of side of brain talent to become an engineer, but everyone has talent and it's, uh, the, the goal in life and the secret of life is defining how to best use that inherent talent you're born with. In some ways, this is also Louisiana's Science Center. If you draw a 50-mile radius around this spot, three-quarters of the school kids are from Louisiana. Today, Infinity is just a shell. It demands a little imagination to visualize this place. But Fred Hayes was a believer when this was an idea on a piece of paper. It'll become known. Some people We'll search it out. Those that are uh, space buffs, if you will, that have a great interest in science and space, I mean, they'll, co they'll come and make trips uh, from probably uh, foreign countries. They'll come to this facility. The opening is set for the spring of 2012. The state of Mississippi and NASA have put up millions for the project. Across state lines, that's not a possibility for Louisiana. However, Hayes says that th they are actively looking for donors in Louisiana, mm -hmm. and they're, they're mining some prospects now. How much money do they need still? Well, th they're working on private uh, groups and foundations. They, it's a $42 million project. Mm -hmm. they, they need $10 million more. Mm -hmm. So uh, as John Wilson said tonight, we prefer to think of it as being three quarters of the way there. <laughs> but uh, they've got some more work to do. It looks like it could be great. Wow, it looks great. The pictures are great.